Hey guys, Craig Setzer with you today. A little bit of a different uh, tropical tracks, but I thought uh, we needed to do one because of what's going on. Uh, expected to form in the Southwest Atlantic. Let's get right to it. I'm not in my typical home studio here, so uh, please bear with me. It's not technically uh, maybe what you're used to, but uh, we'll get it done anyway. So I always like to start off and talk about what are our areas of concern, what areas are watching, and because of this developing low pressure area, uh, expected there. Um, extreme Northeast Caribbean, but more likely in the Southwest Atlantic there, uh, east of the Bahamas. Because of this, there is the low threat here to the entire east coast of Florida, Georgia, as well as parts of South Carolina and the Keys and the Northwest and Central Bahamas uh, for the time being. No threat for the west coast of Florida. And when I say threat, this means would we have to make hurricane preparations? And uh, there's still going to be some bad weather in the central and northwest Bahamas and through much of Florida. But does this look like a hurricane event? Right now, it does not. But we're still about four to five days away. So uh, that could change. Our threat condition could elevate here. But everybody in the green area needs to be watching closely here uh, as we go through the rest of the weekend into next week. Because if the threat does increase for hurricane preparations, then that's something we don't want to fall behind on. And I'll go through in detail about what that means. Let's take a deeper dive now into what's really going on here. So here's the uh, satellite loop, and you can see some pretty big thunderstorms uh, located just over the Northeast Caribbean as well as the Greater Antilles there, especially Puerto Rico. I've had some uh, flash flooding there and stormy weather throughout the Lesser Antilles, Leeward Islands, as well as the Virginia, Virginia Island. Virgin Islands there. Uh, Virginia not involved in this case here. But uh, this area here in, on the water vapor loop, it shows up a little bit better there. You can really make out the bigger upper level low here. Uh, that's, that's that circulation right there. And underneath of that low is uh, some areas of thunderstorms over here. So what's going on is we have a couple of things competing against each other. The thunderstorms, because the air is rising quickly, the air pressure is trying to drop there. And so some of the models are suggesting low pressure is trying to drop over here or develop over here. That is one area. But the upper level low, the bigger low, is right kind of centered over the Turks and Caicos right there. And some of the models are suggesting that the low pressure is going to want to develop right over there. So really depending on where this low develops is going to kind of help influence how bad potentially our weather is going to be across Florida. I think it's not terribly likely that if it does develop over here, it's going to be tropical because there's a lot of wind shear. So if, if it does develop over here, it would probably have to work around this upper level low. That's going to take some time. Uh, and then if it did get towards the center there, then maybe uh, it could transition. This bigger low could transition into something tropical. All in all, the bottom line is this is not going to be a quick process as this low pressure becomes established in the, uh, in the southwest Atlantic here. It's going to very slowly try to transition into a tropical system. And it's also going to be a messy process because we have a lot of dry air here. We have cold air in upper parts of the atmosphere. And those two things have to be worked through to develop into a truly tropical system. What's the difference? Why is it important when we talk about tropical and non-tropical systems? Tropical systems have their strongest winds near the center. So we think of like tropical storms and hurricanes. Non-tropical systems have their winds more spread out from where the low pressure center is. And uh, since this is probably going to be more of a hybrid, both tropical and non-tropical, it means our wind field is probably going to be bigger. But we're going to have to keep our eyes on if it tries to develop a, a center or a core there, a tropical core, because that's where we could have the strongest uh, winds. The forecast is for it to move to the north and then to the northwest towards Florida as we go into the week here. So. Certainly things we're going to be watching in the meantime right now, all the thunderstorms basically to the east of it. So uh, any development process is going to be once again slow to occur. And underneath that the big upper level low, you can see there's really hardly any thunderstorm activity at all uh, going on right now. So that's another kind of limiting ingredient. All right, so here is the European uh, forecast for the next six days. And this is the, uh, the relative humidity forecast. And it kind of shows uh, what's going on here in terms of its this hybrid nature here. Because typically with a tropical system, we think of the moisture more in a ball around where the center of the low pressure is. But as you can see here, there's a combination of dry air and moist air uh, wrapping into that forecast low center there. 
and then it kind of moves on to the west there with the worst of the weather reaching Florida Tuesday, later on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then uh, Thursday as it kind of slows down crossing the peninsula there, at least according to the European model there. Uh, then into the eastern gulf, is that going to be a possibility of dealing with something coming out of the eastern gulf? It's a possibility. We're just going to have to watch it. I think folks on the east coast need to watch more closely now. Folks on the west coast, uh, we've got a day or so before anything needs to be done. So when we t talk about a tropical threat, we really have two kind of timelines or, or funnels here. First off, we kind of assess, is it a threat to Central and South Florida uh, or to Central and North Florida, if that's where you're located, or in the Panhandle. And for right now, we're focusing on the threat to Central and South Florida. We're about four days away, and so we can kind of check off this box here as a yes. So uh, we're yes here. Uh, it is a potential threat to Central and South Florida. Now, as we get closer, then we can narrow down the threat. When we're about two days out, then we know is it, or we can say, is it a threat to maybe specific counties? Uh, and then by, of course, as we get into the 24-hour time frame, then we can really uh, ascertain, it, is it a threat to specific uh, cities and things like that? So that's part of our threats prep timeline there. We're kind of narrow things down as we get closer, but right now we're still pretty far out, so uh, we're still looking at pretty big areas of potential threats. What should we be doing at this point? We never want to rush preparations in any type of tropical storm or hurricane threat. It's always a slow, deliberate process. We can always pause along the way. We don't have to rush to completion. We just want to take steps, uh, things step by step. We're four days out now, so we're about Topping off our hurricane supplies and kits. That means I'm going to make sure my gas tank stays at least half full. That means I'm going to uh, check to make sure my flashlights are working. Things like that. I'm not going to go crazy. I've still got my hurricane kit that I prepared early in the season. So uh, I'm, I'm in good shape there. And I'm also going to just think about what am I going to need to move if this becomes a bigger threat here? Stuff outside, am I going to need to, need to move that around? If I've got a boat, am I going to need to run some extra dock lines? Stuff like that because I think uh, the weather's going to start getting windy at least on Monday and uh, that's going to cause bigger tidal swings as well. If we get into the three-day time frame, then we're talking about personal preparations, meaning maybe some extra cash on hand and medication. But at any point along the way, if it looks like it's no longer coming toward us, or it looks like it's no longer going to be something that's pretty strong, like a strong tropical storm or a weak hurricane, then we can stop our preps. But we don't want to be behind the curve on the preps. We want to get our preps done slowly and methodically. Nothing to get excited or scared about. It's just a step-by-step -step process. That's kind of the kind of the culture we need to have here. So that's basically it. Uh, I'll plan on doing another update. On, unfortunately, once again, the production quality not great, but I'll do another update uh, tomorrow afternoon, Sunday afternoon. In the meantime, thanks for watching.